Pa, who it is rather high. Seven, eight thousand feet. Miss, you've taken your pardon, me. Please join us, Miss. Oh, never mind, Miss. I'm just Barney Mason. And, well, I'm not making this imposition just because you're so very, very attractive, which, of course, you are, but because, you see, there's a gentleman at the back of the car who may not really be a gentleman after all. Well, which gentleman is it that's bothering? The one with the snake eyes. Well, he, he wasn't exactly bothering me. He was just sort of staring. I can't say as I blame you. Well, I've been stared at before. But, well, uh, this isn't the kind of stare that sort of flatters a girl. He looked like he was going to cut my throat. Mr. Derringer? Is there a Mr. Derringer in this car? Right here, conductor. This telegram came aboard for you when we stopped at Emigrant Gap. Emigrant Gap? That's where I got on. That's 23 miles ago. <laughs> you don't deliver very fast, do you? Lady, when this train is dropping down out of the Donner Pass, I ain't one to go jump in the gaps between cars. Didn't he call you Mr. Derringer? That's right. Dear old horse, big trouble in Virginia City. We'll meet you in Reno. Watch yourself, Colorado Charlie. Are you any relation to Yancey Derringer? The closest. The fellow who owns the little Bonanza silver mine in Virginia City? The same. Oh, oh well. I just never met a gent before who was rich and good-looking. Oh, oh, my. I feel faint. The altitude, help. Let me go! Let me go! Help! 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 but we already had one, a very warm welcome. Now, what does that mean? We were ambushed on the train by a girl and a gunslinger. The girl got away. And a gunslinger? Oh. But the answer don't make sense. How'd they know you was coming to the Comstock? And how'd they know you was gonna be on that train? Well, I sent you a telegram from San Francisco telling you. Now, I didn't exactly take out no advertisement, Vegan. Well, I also sent a telegram to Judge Randall, telling him when I'd arrive. Yeah, but Judge Randall's your partner. Charlie, read the sign. Anybody with a scout in the telegraph office of Virginia City know when I'm going to arrive. Well, I got his three tickets on the stage to Virginia City. Well, now, you just hold on to him, because first I'm going to have a bath, and then we're going to have a power. A bath? Why, you ain't been on that train but three days. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. I mean, for giving a girl like I the absolute thrill of a lifetime, letting me ride in the engine with you. Now, now, when you get to Virginia City, you be sure to look me up. Hear me? Funny. Clay. You took me by surprise. How did it go? Went all to pieces. Where's Val? He's lying somewhere out near Emigrant Gap. But they shot him. That Mr. Derringer didn't turn out to be any tenderfoot. I only got away myself by sneaking up to the engine after Val made his play. And uh, Derringer? He's here in Reno. Just got off the train. Couldn't miss him. I wasn't looking for him. I thought you and Val would take care of him. It wasn't our fault, Clay. No, Bonnie, it wasn't. It was my fault for giving the job to a pair of fools. 
We've got to stop him from getting up to the Comstock. Now, you take a buckboard. I'll send Pete with you. Get back to Virginia City. What if Derringer gets to Virginia City? Shut up. We still hold the aces. Pete, head back with Bonnie. What's the matter? Everything. Fargo, you and Collins peel an eye. There are two ways up that Geiger grade. Horse and stage. And don't take any chances. Where's Val? He took chances. There's two of them. Now, that won't even be exercise. Well, there's the two that Pa who can see. Miss Bonnie Mason, the gunman on the train that's poor. A ramrod, somebody that's running the show, it's five, possibly some that we haven't met. All in all, I'd say that there's quite a gathering of the clan. Ah, there's lots of signs, but I can't read them, old horse. Well, what was the trouble in Virginia City that you telegraphed me about? First, there was your partner, Judge Randall. A very fine man. Yeah, maybe so. But when I first seen him, he was acting loonier than a coyote chewing on local weed. Details, friend Charles, details. Well, first off, when I come to Virginia City, he won't recognize me. After two months on the trail, you probably didn't look like a human being. <laughs> Maybe so. But the next night when I'm in the Lucky Deuce drinking some bad whiskey, he sends me a note telling me to visit the boneyard. See anybody you knew? Yeah. You. For a fact, begging, there it was, your very own grave. And on the headstone it was written, here lies Yancey Derringer, shot down in the streets of Virginia City by Wesley Smith. Gone, but not forgotten. Wes Smith? Eh? Well, at least he was killed by one of the fastest gun hands ever. Ah. Hand me, pal. Now, how are we going to sneak out on that stage to Virginia City with two types like that hanging fire? Won't take a stage. Hmm. It's a long walk for a soft shoed New Orleans dude, Joe Horse. That's right. We'll take horses. Tonight. Pause here, stranger, and think of me. As I am now, you will be. Well, yeah, maybe so, Yance. But there ain't no point in rushing things. I seen that old horse. It gave me quite a turn. Charlie, did you ever meet up with Wes Smith? I was in Abilene the day that him and Luke Bowdry had the shootout. Luke is actually a mite bet faster, but Wes shot Luke's thumb off accidentally, and I left Luke with nothing to cock his gun with, so he tried the border switch. He flipped it into his left hand, and Wes killed him dead. That Wes is a mighty mean man. Dead. Plant you very deep. Give me a knife. Is that West Smith? With a shotgun blast in the face, who could ever tell? Buried him in clothes that look like mine. You sure that ain't you? I saw a light back there in the graveyard. Maybe you saw a spook. It was a light, I tell you. 
Well, I ain't going in to find out. Anyway, what's the difference? Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, let's leave him like we found him and get out of here. Where to? I want to see Judge Randall. get you. So why not be downright friendly about the whole thing? What do you men want? See Judge Randall? Judge ain't in. He's gone away. You're a liar. Mister, whoever you are, you start backing up. Sorry, friend. I'm going to see the judge. And I'm saying you ain't. I don't think you've got any choice in the matter. Yes, there may be a guard outside. There was. Ain't no tracks out back. Just the one man. Evening, Judge. Evening, Charlie. Say, uh, wouldn't happen to have a jug here, boss, would you? Charlie. You knew it wasn't me that they buried. Nancy, you shouldn't have come. Not now, not till I found her. They'll know you've been here. They'll know it's a showdown. Now they'll kill her. Charlie, pour him a drink. Drink it. You don't have to twist my arm. Four months ago, when I was in Virginia City, you were one of the bravest, most honest men I'd ever met in my whole life. That's why I made you a partner in the Little Bonanza. But something has happened. I don't understand it. There's been no other way. I'm not afraid for myself. It's Julie, my granddaughter. Judge. Takes you 20 minutes to cross the Mississippi at New Orleans, because that's the end of it. Up in Minnesota, you can step across, because that's the beginning of it. Beginning might be a good place to start, Judge. She was the beginning. She was visiting me. Wonderful girl being kind to her grandfather. Then she left for home in Sacramento, but she never got there. Who stopped her? Clay Wellman. I know that now. He came to me and told me if I didn't cooperate, That'll be the end of Julie. He was a newcomer in town with a fantastic scheme. To take over the little bonanza? Yes. Yancey, we just made a new strike, uncovered a whole new vein. And then the word got out. Well, he knows that I live in New Orleans. That's a long way from here. Not too many people in Virginia City know me, so he gave him a substitute. Just so long as he could keep you under control. That's exactly what happened. And he got away with it. He brought in the substitute, a drifter named Hennessy, dressed him like you, had papers made out for him, had me confirm that he was you. Even had me marry him to Bonnie Mason, who runs the Lucky Deuce on C Street. Just a few witnesses, just enough. The widow Derringer. And then he had poor Hennessy murdered in a street fight, so Bonnie Mason could inherit the little bonanza. Fantastic. Fantastic. And he got away with it. Almost got away with it. Yancey, there's Julie. Now, you won't call a turn while Clay Wellman's holding her because he's ruthless. Judge, I promise you that no harm will come to your granddaughter. Thank you, Yates. But you do want her back, don't you? Of course, but... All right. Now, we'll lose the guard outside. You play it straight just like nothing had happened. Wait till you hear from me. Come on, Judge. Where are you going? Find your granddaughter. I think I know where she is. <laughs>
Get it? Yeah. Let's ride. Old horse, you mind toting this on your cayuse? Mine gets a mite spooky when it's carrying dynamite. They ain't just exactly gonna let us in on no treasure hunt. Feed her again? Yeah. I don't know why the boss don't just finish her. She'll save a lot of climbing down the dock. Tell your troubles to the boss. Go ahead. I know the little bonanza better than they do. There's another way in. Grandfather sent me to get you out. It's about time. I thought you'd never get here. Julie, my little Julie. Don't take on so, Grandpa. When I think what they might have done to you. I wasn't afraid of them. At least not much. Yancy, how can I ever thank you? Yancy? Yancy Derringer? That's right, Miss Julie. I went to your funeral two weeks no, ago. No, no, Julie, that's all a lie. This is the real Yancy. Judge, you can save the explanations for later. Right now, we have to get into town. As long as Julie is here, there's no reason why we can't foreclose on the widow Derringer and Clay Wellman. Clay Wellman's not his real name. I heard the guards talking to him. What is his real name, Julie? Wes Smith. What? That's right, Wesley Smith. 
It's funny, Charlie, but his own vanity made him use his name for the tombstone of the unknown Yancey Derringer. Yancey? I'm coming, too. I got a right. All right, Judge, if you insist. He does. Now, don't you worry about me, Grandpa. That Wes Smith's gonna be a mighty hard man to take, Biggin. Well, let's find out how hard. you to make an arrest. Hello, Ike. Judge? Arrest? Arrest who? The widow Derringer. Alias Bonnie Mason. The charge is fraud, kidnapping, and murder. The murder of a man that was buried with my name is Yancey Derringer. What? True, Ike. And if in his word ain't good enough, mine it ought to be, you old catamount. Charlie! Hold on, Bonnie! <laughs> His name isn't Clay, Marshal. It's Wesley Smith. That's a lie. Then you better be very slow on the draw. Wellman, I'll have to hold you till things are straightened out here. How about a little service here? Can a man even wet his whistle? Well, at least this time we found the right name. I'm very glad it wasn't yours. Well, Yancey, will you be staying on with us for a bit now that the mine is running again? We've got a lot of silver to spend in riotous living, you know. I'm afraid I can't get out of town. There's no room on the train. Everyone wants to be at Promontory Point for the wedding of the rails. So you're stuck here, huh? Yes, I'm afraid so. Just bad luck. Well, then, as long as you are stuck here, why not be stuck with me? Well, that's the nicest bit of bad luck I've had in many a day. <laughs> 